count them two for celebrating this Sunday, the start of March Madness basketball and St. Patrick's Day. Now beer is good for both. First things first though, was St. Patrick even Irish and did people always drink so much on the big day? Well, here are a few myths debunked in less than 90 seconds. So you think you know everything about St. Patrick's Day, huh? Think again. Let's debunk some myths. So there really was a St. Patrick, but he wasn't even Irish. He was British. <laughs> Big difference. He was born around 390 AD, and he wound up in Ireland when he was 16. He was kidnapped and sent there to tend sheep as a slave. Happy sweet 16, dude. Oh, you know that whole wearing green thing? Big problem in Ireland back in the old days. In fact, it was actually considered unlucky. You see, legend has it that green was the favorite color of the good people. That's the proper name of the fairies. They'd steal people, especially kids, who wore too much green. Oh, and the parades? That's an American thing. Any excuse to take to the streets screaming and drinking. How great would it have been back in the day to be in Ireland on St. Patrick's Day? Huh, not fun at all. They closed all the pubs. How dare they? You see, March 17th falls during Lent, and back then the people in charge thought that tying a few on was just a little too sinful. <laughs> Lucky for us, the laws were changed in 1961. So drink up, and that St. Patrick's Day debunks. Now, after a few Guinness, you might think you could river dance, I should know. I tried. Sober, in fact. Turns out it's not that hard to pick up a few steps. All right, so you may not be able to pull off river dance in time for St. Patrick's Day, unless you drink a lot of Guinness, but you may be able to pull off a few key traditional Irish step dance moves. We've got somebody here to teach you. It is Louise Corrigan. Hi there. Hi. We're at the Irish Arts Center. Now, you are attorney by day, dancer by night. Yes. You don't wear this as an attorney, do you? I don't. This you don't? is not, no, not how long, my day. Concern. How long have you been practicing step? I've been dancing since I was four and a half, so almost 26 years now. 26 yeah. years. Mm -hmm. Is it a good workout? I watch this and I see the movement. I think you got to shed a lot of pounds while you're doing it. It's a great workout. It's great cardio. You move a lot. Your feet go very fast. It's definitely a good workout. Week. How hard is it just to pick up a few basic moves? It's really not that hard. There are some very basic steps that everyone can pick up very easily. It's always fun. When Even in Converse one. sneakers? Even in Converse sneakers. Breathing hard. How is that possible? <laughs> I am in so much trouble. All right, but you have been doing this since you were four, right? Yes. So when you're growing up in Ireland, do, do all kids just learn this kind of dance at some point in time? Yeah, it has kind of worked out that way that at some point when we were in school, everyone at least took a few classes. Traditionally, Irish dancing was very loose, easygoing, and then river dance changed everything for Irish dancing and it took it onto a whole other platform. Two types of shoes, soft shoes and sort of hard, are they like, they're like tap shoes almost? They are, right? they're very similar to tap shoes. The different, the the tips are slightly different, they're thicker, and they're made of fiberglass. And then soft shoes are just very simple leather. We're going to do a soft shoe. Soft shoe. Yes. We're going to do a little jump okay. on the spot. Jump. And you're going and to try take to small fall steps down. Okay. to the right. Right foot first. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Excellent. Now we're going to change feet with a little jump. Okay. Jump and do the exact same thing going back. She said it was brilliant. It's brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> Perfect. The hop two three is like three little steps. We take one step forward, one step over, one step back. When we do it, we go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. On to the next one, the jig. Okay. Let's try a little jig. Let's so try. the tempo is different. Uh, you're gonna just do a little jump again. Jump, two feet together. You're gonna bring your front foot to the knee, up to the knee, well, and, and then you bring it back. And four little steps. One, two, three, four. And back, two, three, four. That's it. Moment of truth, Louise. Full house out there. It's people. This is your big moment. This is my moment. So if someone calls you a plastic patty on St. Patrick's Day, that's probably not a good thing. How do the Irish really feel about how Americans celebrate March 17th? We went to Dublin to find out. So I've always wondered about what the Irish think about the way Americans celebrate St. Patrick's Day, what with all of their crazy shenanigans, and that's an Irish word by the way. So what better place to find out than the streets of Dublin? I 
somebody said to me once, half, half the people in America are Irish and the other half want to be. Want to be. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I know, you dye your rivers green and you all have parades, New York, Chicago, Boston, it's very big there. From what we can perceive is pretty much what we do, we go out and get bombed and fall about the place and paint each other green. And... You know, most people have just ignored whatever St. Patrick's Day might be, whether it's religious or some or culture or others. But it has definitely become some sort of just chronic drinking disaster. Uh, it's good fun. I mean, nobody's going to really complain about it too much. Well, what we do is we stop indoors and look at everybody else going mad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then we come out the next day when it's safe. Listen, you're American. You know, you have American passports. <laughs> That's like three or four generations, fair enough, you're of Irish descent, you're not Irish, you know, and so we would call them plastic paddy yeah. But Yeah, I mean, like, to see Germans, French, Americans, all the Europeans and Australia and New Zealand celebrating our old island, it's, you know, I mean, there is an aspect of pride to it. But what about the American tradition of green beer? They dyed the Guinness green? Yeah. Wow. Oh, an appalling aberration of Guinness. How would you just get away with it? I think Guinness is sacrilege. No. So there you have it, from the Irish themselves. It doesn't matter how you celebrate St. Patrick's Day, as long as you celebrate it. Just don't dye the Guinness green. And finally, if Guinness isn't your cup of uh, tea, there's always Irish coffee, but it is easy to miss big making this classic cocktail. Here are a few tips.